cultural dimensions and our mental programming. This presentation is based on research by Gerd Hofstede and Erin Meyer. In this picture you see a cultural comparison between Germany, India and Turkey. On the bottom you see seven cultural dimensions Hofstede has researched about, like power distance, individualism, motivation towards achievement and success, uncertainty avoidance, long-term orientation and indulgence. We won't go into detail about all of them, but if we look at power distance, it's clearly visible that Germany is a much more egalitarian society with a score of only 35 than compared to India or Turkey, where a high power distance is widely accepted. How is this research done? Erin Meyer explains that in every society you will find the typical representative but also people, if you look at extreme A or extreme B of a certain cultural dimension, so you will find members of the society that tend towards one or the other side to the far end on both sides. So what you get is a normal distribution and that gives you the value that we saw in the graph before. Power distance is about the unequal distribution of power. How well accepted is this fact in a society? If you look to the far left, you'll see that Denmark, Sweden or the Netherlands are comparatively egalitarian societies. In comparison to them, Germany looks much more hierarchical. But if you compare Germany with Japan, Korea or Nigeria, you'll find it's much more egalitarian than those countries who tend to be more hierarchical. There's a high acceptance of power distance in these countries, in these societies. How will you show if you disagree? Erin Meyer describes that some societies are very confrontational if they show disagreement and as a German I might say yes the Germans shove it right in your face if they disagree with something you've done or said. Whereas other countries tend to avoid confrontation. Again we see Japan on the far right hand side and somewhere in the middle we'll see USA, UK, Sweden, Mexico, Singapore. This is really one of my favorites from Erin Meyer's book The Anglo-Dutch Translation Guide. It's again about confronting someone with criticism. So what the British say would be something like, with all due respect, really careful. What the British mean is, I think you're wrong. But what the Dutch understand is, ah, oh, he's listening to me. Or if you look at the middle, the British say, oh, by the way, what the British mean, the following criticism is the purpose of this discussion. But what the Dutch understand is, oh, this is not very important. Or look at the last line, the British say, oh, very interesting. In fact, they mean, I don't like it. But what the Dutch understand is, oh, he's impressed. So you can see these cultures are relatively different in how they utter and how they understand criticism. How do you develop a trusting relationship? Do you first work on certain tasks and out of this evolves a good relationship? Or would you first invest time and energy in the relationship itself and then start working at the tasks? If you look at the comparison between Germany and other countries, you'll see Germans are on the task-based side. And again, Japan would be more on the relationship-based side. To put it more practical, Germans would say trust is built through business-related activities and work relationships are built and dropped easily based on the practicality of the situation. You do good work consistently and basically you say you are reliable, I enjoy working with you and therefore I trust you. Just the contrary on the Japanese side. Trust is built through, for instance, sharing meals, evening drinks and visits at the coffee machine. 
work relationships build up slowly over the long term. And people would say, I've seen who you are at a deep level. I've shared personal time with you. I know others well who trust you. How much knowledge about context do you expect? Low context means little context information is expected. Basically, that means we don't expect others to know much about our society, about our culture. So we invest a lot of time and words to explain why things are the way they are. And then finally, we get to the core of the information. In high context cultures, you simply expect much more context information for your listener. Have you ever wondered why some US Americans sound like they're constantly talking down to you when they're giving you explanations, when they're giving presentations, and when they know that you're not American, or maybe even if you are also US American, that's simply based on their belonging to a low context culture. They simply don't expect that you know all the background and the ifs and whys, and this is why they supply this information along with the information they actually want to give. How do you give negative feedback? That's not quite the same like confronting someone with disagreeing. Um, it has more to do really with personal feedback to a person. Germans shove it right into your face. They will tell you, and it's their idea to be honest, to tell you the brutal truth, along with France, Netherlands, maybe a little bit of Italy and Spain. On the right hand side, India, Mexico, China, Korea, Japan, Indonesia, they prefer to give you more indirect negative feedback. And surprisingly enough, UK and USA are located in the middle. Now, if you compare this with the graph we saw before about high context cultures and low context cultures, you'll see that US, Canada and UK perform more indirect negative feedback, but at the same time, they're also low context societies. Whereas Germany gives direct negative feedback and is also in a low context society. How do you explain something? Do you explain the principles first or do you explain applications first? If you compare books written in Canada or the US, you will often notice that they start with stories. Some person has been in some situation and the story went so and so. And then finally, you get the academic explanation why the story went this way. Hardly ever would you see this in a German presentation. The Germans basically start with Adam and Eve and how the earth was created. And later on, they'll tell you the practical application of the principles they laid out for you first. Do you have an early or a late decision? In some societies, you discuss a long time and then finally you make a decision. And after this, after uh, this decision, you start with the implementation and you want no more discussion. In a class of international students who have the task to prepare presentations together, this might create a certain amount of discussion about the style you decide. Because the Germans are very much used to long discussions and then they decide and then there are no more changes. But it doesn't have to be this way. You also have societies cultures where you have a certain amount of discussion, but then you make a decision. That's just to have a decision, to have a general way how you will move forward. But during the implementation, you will have more discussion. You will have a possible revisiting of the decision, and it's even possible to alter the decision again. So if you do this to a German, they will be major frust frustrated. How important is it to convince all team members? Do you work towards a consensus, like in Sweden or Japan? Or is it a top-down decision 
where some boss says this is how we're going to do it and all the rest will follow along. Germany is a little bit towards consensus but more in the middle. Some recommendations for intercultural communication. Ethnocentrism. The fact that you see your own society as normal. Ethnocentrism is normal, but it's risky. So you should accept that there is a cultural predisposition and it is part of our minds, no matter where we come from. Culture explains a lot, but it doesn't explain everything. Culture isn't good or bad, so don't judge, hold back your judgment. And reflect yourself and your behavior. Maybe these cultural dimensions will help you to understand why something is normal and seems practical for you, and for someone else it's not so attractive. Good intentions are worth a lot, so show your intentions, let your working partners, let your classmates feel and understand what you're trying to get at, good intentions are really worth a lot. In multicultural cooperation, it's necessary to find a medium common ground. Again, Japan is a special example. From this point of view, Germans are totally different. A lot of context information is expected in Japan. They say, hear one, understand ten. Okay, hear one, you just hear one piece of information, understand ten. You get a much more picture in your mind. That's context information. Trusting relationships grow if you get to know the other as a person. If you go out to eat and spend a lot of time together, if you get to know the other also with private information, if you never confront anyone directly or make them lose their face, and decisions are prepared very intensely. A consensus is found and everything is aligned, and sometimes even before the official meeting. If you like to learn more about these topics, buy this book. For intercultural understanding, this book is my absolute favorite. I really strongly recommend you to buy and read it. It's so much fun and you learn a lot.